Hello there. This time I'm making a giant destroyed mecha head. So to start with a few bits of foam core and using 45 degree angles to bevel the edges and gluing them together into a rough cockpit shape. Then using more pieces of foam core to block in the other parts of the cockpit, starting with the sides and also putting a placeholder for the chair in the middle using some thin foam. For the deceased pilot, I used a body and legs for a romantic marine, then trimmed them down slightly so it was more of a sitting pose. For the bulk of the armor plating and paneling on the mecha, I used some of this textured cardboard I got from the local hobby store, and then glued it down over every surface, using thin strips to break up some of the larger panels. Using a blade and a sculpting tool, I then carved the seat into something that looked a bit more padded. Not much of this will be seen behind the mini, so it doesn't matter if it doesn't look great. I purchased a bunch of these adhesive beads online, which I normally use for rivets. But as soon as they had square ones, I'm using those to break up some more of the panels and make it a bit more 3D. I then added some piping and some wires, using some bamboo dowels on one side, and then various lengths of wire on the other. The armature wire is very easy to work with, and you can get some nice little details using that, which I then secured with Mod Podge and hot glue where appropriate. The wire is also a great way to cover any gaps between the panels and to break up any of the large flat areas. I also sculpted a few bits out of foam using a sculpting tool just to give some banding to it and make some supports for some kind of monitor screens and a few panels on the side as well. For the monitors themselves I used some plastic guard with the corners cut at 45 degree angles which is the key to making it look sci-fi. But I won't be gluing these on until much later just so I can paint it a bit more easily. Using the knife again I removed a piece of the flooring and added some exposed wires where there'd been some damage. So the idea is that one side of this cockpit's been blown open and one of the monitors is now gone. I then gave it a coat of black gesso so everything would blend together and I could see more easily how it would look at the end. For the back of the head I used some more pieces of foam core to bulk out the shapes and by slicing one side of the foam you can get a nice curve on the top of it. I didn't really have a plan for how I wanted the overall shape to be, so a lot of this was throwing stuff at the wall and seeing what looked good, and then when I was happy with the shape, gluing it together. While taking a break, I finished off the pilot by adding a skeletal hand and a head from an Oathmark skeleton kit. So we have a nice smiley chap. Moving back onto the head shape, I added a few fins to either side, which looked okay, so I covered it with some more plating using the textured cardboard. The original plan was to keep the actual cockpit separately so I could paint that and glue it on later, but I ended up gluing it on at this stage just so I could more easily handle it with the rest of the terrain. It also felt like it was lacking some extra armour plating, so raiding the bits box for some plastic bases I'm not using, I glued them around the outside, mainly reinforcing the front of the head, but also adding an armour skirt on the sides. I 
I then added battle damage by carving away some of the edges with a knife. I also carved a piece in half and attached it to the jaw, where something had blown apart the cockpit. Using a pair of clippers, I then went in and roughed up the edge again, adding some irregular cuts and twisting it apart with the pliers. For the underside of the helmet, I made some tubes out of foam core by segmenting the outsides and then gluing it with hot glue before coating one side with more of the textured cardboard. I then used a similar trick for the internals behind the battle damage by using a piece of the textured cardboard above a piece of insulation board and then gluing a few bits of plastic card to it just to break up the shapes. Cracking out the adhesive beads again, I added some large rivets along the edges of the armor paneling. Using some bits of plastic packaging, I also added a few more bits to the internals, including these handy kind of H-shaped bars, which I was not expecting to be this small when I ordered them, but they still have their uses. With black chesa, I gave another coat to the entire thing, so once again I could see how it looked together when it was blended in the same colour. I then set to work on the base where I wanted it to be crashed into a rocky bluff. So I blocked it out with some styrofoam, and then carved it using a knife, and a tinfoil ball to add some stone texture. I've always been a fan of the trope where there are these giant kind of ancient machines which have long forgotten how to use and make, and it fits in really nicely with a post-apocalyptic world where you just have these giant decaying remains of machines half buried in the sand. Using the offcuts of the styrofoam, I added a few rocks on the front of the base, as well as some more of the armour panelling, where it had been fragmented and buried into the sand. The pilot also got a coating of Vallejo black surface primer, so he'd be ready to paint. To blend the rock faces and the mecha together, I mixed up some sculptor mould, and used it to add some texture onto the base, some lumpiness, as well as smooth the gaps between the rocks. Following this, I made some texture paste out of black gesso, sand, PVA glue, and a few bits of cork flock, and then covered all the exposed sculptor mold by smearing it around it. I also used it to add some build up on the edges of the armor plating, and inside the cockpit as well. Luckily, this time I remembered to push the small stones in before it fully dried, which is a step I often forget to do. With the blending done, 
I moved on to the painting stage. So once it had completely fully dried, I started with a layer of burnt umber. For the mecha, I wanted it to be quite contrasting in terms of colour, because I do get bored of painting brown all the time. So I started with a blue turquoise and coated the exposed armour plating. The rock face and the stones on the base got a mid-grey tone. Once the turquoise dried, it had gone quite a bit darker, so using some white paint and a sponge, I began sponging on some texture, so I could lighten up the colour later on with a thinner layer of turquoise paint. Mix it with a bit more white, so you get a lovely kind of 70s seafoam bathroom colour. Thankfully, when dry, this didn't actually look too bad. So I decided to proceed with some metallic paint and begun by applying some chipping on the edges as well as picking out some of the scrap pieces and the girders on the edges of the piece. At this point, I was ready to almost ruin the piece again. So with some bright orange paint and some red paint, I went in and stippled some rust onto the edges of the kind of chipped plating, as well as the metallic girders. And then using some very watered down paint, just streaked it all over the armour plating as well. I then pulled this back a bit by dabbing at it with a sponge and making it a little bit less intense. To blend all the paint together, I then took a tan colour by mixing the burnt umber with some more white paint and then gave a heavy dry brush over all the piece. This also crept onto the lower half of the armour plating so you get a bit of a dirt build up and it would blend it better into the base. I very quickly painted up the pilot by using a mixture of browns and greens and basically wet blending the entire thing so it'd be a very kind of decayed grey colour. I attached him using some matte Mod Podge so I could move them around a bit if I needed to later. To bring the grey colour of the stone back and add a bit more detailing to the ground, I went in and gave a very light dry brush of white paint over the top of it, using a very soft brush and just picking out the top details. Once the pilot had dried and was a bit secure, I then attached a few of the monitors around him, made out of plastic card and a few bits of foam. For some broken glass in the edge of the cockpit, I took some plastic packaging and cut it into a jagged shape before attaching it with some Mod Podge between the gaps in the armour plating. Then using two more squares of the plastic, I glued them on top of the monitors. I then weathered this with a bit of tan paint, just to give it a little bit of an impact of dirt while maintaining the transparency. Now for the monitors using a very thin line of white paint, I added cracks over the top of the screen. Moving on to the very final details, I took some tufts and applied them onto the base where they'd been growing in the shade of the wreckage. I 
I say very final details, but I then found a helmet, which is meant to go with the mini. So I glued it up, trimmed a bit of the base off, and super glued it down next to him. And with that it's done. So we have this long destroyed mecha head, and I'm very pleased with how it came out. I think the paint scheme came out really nicely, and I think the turquoise and the bright orange is a really nice contrast to the browns and the greys which seem to be in a lot of my pieces. I was worried the cockpit would appear too flat, but I think it came out nicely. You can even place a mini on top of it. But anyway, thanks for watching guys, catch you next time.